Welcome back to America's Now. I'm Elaine Reyes. As we've been reporting throughout the broadcast, this October, Venezuelans will vote for a new president. Incumbent Hugo Chavez has been in power since 1998. He's running for a fourth election. This time, the opposition is standing behind one candidate, a young attorney and politician. America's Now contributing correspondent Ena Cuevas went to Venezuela back in May to meet the man looking to break Chavez's winning streak. He is Enrique Capriles Radonsky, an attorney who just turned 40 years old. He's representing the opposition and will battle it out against President Hugo Chavez on October 7th. It's a negative thing for a country to have the same person in charge. The people get used to obeying and the leader gets used to ordering. That is where tyranny and the abuse of power come from. It's a little bit of what we are living in our Venezuela. He's referring to the 14 years Chavez has run the country. The president came into power in 1998 and has easily won each election. But a year ago, 57-year-old Chavez announced he had cancer. He's received numerous treatments in Cuba, but details about his health are shrouded in secrecy. Some reports indicate the cancer is terminal and that Chavez only has a few more months to live. Today we're even, but if the candidate is not the current head of state, none of the leaders who are there can beat me in this election. So as a competitor, you're actually kind of looking forward to facing Chavez. I want him to be the candidate. I don't want to face anybody else. I want him to complete his cycle. In a country as divided as Venezuela, it's no surprise polls are all over the place. But every single one still shows Chavez winning over Capriles. We are going to have a battle of uh, David versus Goliath. Jose Carrasquero is a professor of political science at Simón Bolívar University. He says Chavez remains an extremely popular figure. I believe that the, the government is uh, going to play with Chavez until the end. Uh, basically because they know that Chavez is the only candidate that can beat Capriles. At this moment. But Capriles counters that he has never lost an election. Born of a wealthy family, he began his political career at age 26, becoming the youngest member of the Venezuelan parliament. He's also been a mayor and is now the governor of the state of Miranda, with a population of over two and a half million people. He's mindful of the image he must project, of identifying with the poor who are among Chavez's biggest supporters instead of with the elites. We joined him on the road, and even though Capriles speaks fluent English, he politely declined, preferring to answer our questions in Spanish. Well, it's an uneven battle against a government that has been in power for many years and has no qualms against using public resources to change people's minds, for advertising, to use the entire state apparatus for a political party, TV, radio, and the propaganda machine. It's an uneven battle from that point of view, but I'm used to uneven battles. He argues the socialist policies of the Chavez government haven't provided real solutions to the poverty the country faces. He says government subsidies and handouts have done more harm than good. The condition of poverty changes not when you receive money to live, but when you have a social program that helps you, that shelters you, but that also provides all of the conditions for you to have a job and to become independent. Capriles' main concern is dealing with the violence that's gripping Venezuela. A 2009 government report indicated that during Chavez's tenure, murders have nearly tripled, making Venezuela the murder capital of South America. But the truth is, the, the situation has been going on for about 12, 13, 14 years, and you can't change things overnight. No estoy de acuerdo. I disagree. There are short, medium, and long-term measures. 
The effect education may have will take longer. Providing employment will also have a delayed effect. But in order for the judicial branch to work, we don't need a lot of time. Also, taking guns away from those who are armed doesn't take a lot of time. He says the military is key to curbing the problem. I think the armed forces have to be incorporated into a peace process. Brazil did it and was successful. Venezuela can also do it. Reducing the high crime rate and improving people's sense of public safety is the number one priority. But it's also about restoring confidence in the economy, which has suffered greatly in the past 14 years. Whoever becomes president needs to attract foreign investors using Venezuela's most valuable natural resource, its oil. Venezuela is the fifth largest oil producing country in the world and has the biggest oil reserves outside the Middle East. Caprile says he wants to use the oil to stimulate growth in other areas to jumpstart investments. But I think the oil industry is strategic in attaining that goal, to make sure oil is the motor to diversify the Venezuelan economy. For Carrasquero, the key also lies in political stability. If we can do that, we're going to have a huge investment in Venezuela, basically because we have a potential of uh, development that is, I believe, the, uh, the biggest in all uh, Latin America. But those who oppose Capriles say he represents a return to the old Venezuela, where only the elite wealthy few rule the country. Not so, says a former Chavez supporter. Vladimir Villegas is a journalist who hosts a daily radio talk show. He's held various positions within the Chavez government, including stints as ambassador, as well as vice minister of foreign relations. He says today's opposition includes those who, like him, used to support Chavez but are now looking for a change. It's not about returning to the past. It's about jumping into the future, going to the future, building the Venezuela that all Venezuelans have dreamed of. In a way, Capriles is not related to the past. It's uh, not like talking about all politicians in Venezuela. Uh, Capriles, Capriles represents a new way of doing politics. But the question looming right now is what happens if Chavez is too ill to complete another six-year term? For Carrasquero, the government is being irresponsible in its insistence that Chavez be the candidate. You know that uh, President Chavez is, uh, has a cancer, that the cancer has uh, spare all around his body, and he's going to uh, die sooner or later. So you are playing uh, like a, you are gambling with that. A lot of voters would be unsure. And they're going to be asking themselves, what's going to happen if the president wins the election and three, four months later he has to step down? Who will follow? Who will he leave behind? How are we going to handle that in Venezuela? Despite the criticism, even his harshest opponents give Chavez credit for getting Venezuelans interested and involved in politics. But most importantly, for bringing the issue of poverty to the forefront. But for me, that's not enough. For Venezuelans, it's not enough to identify the problem, talk about it, give it an identity. It's about solving the existing problems. Only time will tell if Chavez's controversial ideas survive without his larger-than-life persona at the helm. Thirteen years ago, it was Capriles, as vice president of the Congress, who welcomed Hugo Chavez to the government. This election will determine whether the people want to continue with the socialist revolution he started, or if they want to give a chance to a new generation, promising to blend the old with the new.